everyone. A lot of you have requested a video about how I shoot my videos, but I've kind of held off for a while because there's just nothing fancy or interesting about how I do it. Whenever I learn a new skill or tool, I look for the easiest ways to do just those things that I need to do. But a lot of people want the most powerful or professional solution, which gives them more options. But there's only so many steep learning curves you can take on. I would rather know and love to do what I need in a lot of areas than be expert in just a few. So I use Lightburn, the easiest software on my laser cutter. That's Proto, the easiest CNC software. The same simple setting for almost all my 3D prints and Tinkercad for everything. No, none of those are the most powerful and professional. But I'm not trying to impress anyone with what tools I use, just what I can do with them. And the time spent mastering a more difficult tool chain, in my, in my case, is usually better spent making more videos for you. There are only so many hours in the day. There's always going to be a trade-off. This same philosophy extends to my video. It's a very streamlined process, so a lot of you might have the urge to say, oh, you should just do this, it's quick, or use this, it's more powerful. But that time adds up and usually doesn't translate into more income. For example, take 4K video. It requires much more powerful computers to edit, much more storage space, and only a tiny number of viewers ever see it. I would need at least 2 million followers before the ad views of 4K viewers paid for the cost of working in that resolution. The same applies to a lot of video production for YouTube. If you enjoy perfect lighting setups with color grading in post-production and all that, great, but it has very little effect on views compared to spending that same time on more videos and more interaction with your followers. At least when I look at my numbers, Okay, let's look at what I use. There will be links to everything in the description box. Please don't be one of those people who ask in the comments without checking there. First, 90% of my editing is done in iMovie. Yes, I've used all the other major editing packages, but all I do is simple straight cuts with no fancy anything, no graphics. iMovie lets me do that and lets me do it very fast. Next. I don't use DSLRs or mirrorless for my main cameras. I use two video cameras, Sony FDR AX40s. I bought those main cameras as a pair. That way, when I go back and forth between camera A and camera B, they're pretty closely matched. I can also use one kind of battery and use camera A or B whenever I want without needing to use the better camera. They're set on auto everything except white balance which I put on outdoor to match the lights at 5600 Kelvin and manually set with a target in post-production. I'm long when I should so not having to run back and forth to start and stop the cameras is critical. This will record non-stop at 1080p for almost 4 hours which makes syncing up the timelines easy. Then you don't have to use as many jump cuts because you can cut smoothly between cameras. Most DSLR and mirrorless cameras in the price range can only shoot 30 minutes at a time. So for those four hours as I move around my workshop, I move the cameras on their tripods with me. Each camera has this squeeze candles tripod head and a bubble level. It takes a little practice, but I can get them pointed squarely at me pretty quickly these days. A bit more difficult is using the lights on myself. And you'll notice in my videos, sometimes that's a bit off. I use three falconized pancake LED lights. They are pretty good, but it's just tough to move around a space so much. Move cameras and light yourself nicely without taking more time than is sensible. My overhead boot lights can be swamped from over this table to over my workbench. A cool hack I found is some Matthew grip equipment will attach directly to wire shelving. It makes for a strong mounting point and limits clutter. All my cameras are standardized on the Manfoto 200PL mounting plate, even my gimbal, so it's fast to move cameras between fixed mounting points, like the side and overhead views and my workbench.
I just pop the camera on and it's the, in the right place to shoot. The workbench also has two LED stick lights to bounce off the wall so my face has a bit of feel when, I, when I'm working there. All the lights are on a remote so I can turn them on and off individually as needed. The table wheel when you see my reviews is the Sony A6500 with the Manfoto Magic Arm. The 6500 with this SIM 6050 kit lens is what takes all my Instagram photos as well. When you see video like this of me outside, it's the Sigma 16mm lens with the A6500 and the Gusson Air Quartz gimbal. For audio with the A6500, when I'm outside, I have a Rode Video My Pro. It's light enough to be used with the gimbal. If you look over here, you can see I've made a small 3D printed back bracket to move the microphone from the top of the camera, where it interferes with the gimbal in inverted mode to the side. I 3D print tons of little adapters and parts. I've even built entire camera mounts like this. Source Creality Ender 3 is under $200 and can print thousands of different standard pieces of photo gear, often in under an hour. It's a great investment for any photographer, and they are my sponsor. And I've got an affiliate link in the description box. So by supporting them, you are supporting me and this channel. For audio in my workshop, I use a Rode Filmmaker Kit. It takes rechargeable AA batteries and so far has been a good investment. I also have a Zoom H1. But I don't use it that much. For small general purpose action cameras, I use the FlyFight ASE. I have a few and they are a perfect blend of price and performance. I really like them. I don't do as much drone flying anymore, but my DJI Spark never let me down for the shots I needed. The only reason I don't do more drone stuff is setup time. Taking it out, getting everything synced, then it demands you download updates. You can be Stuck standing there on the street for 10 minutes before you even take off. I'll do more drone photography when I can just take it out and fly it without all the nonsense just for 10 seconds of B-roll. For 360 video, I use the Insta360 ONE X. It's easily my favorite camera. It shoots beautiful, digitally stabilized immersive video, has replaceable memory cards and batteries, so you can shoot all day. You can view the video as 360 or flat. Its audio isn't great, but other than that, it's just an amazing piece of technology. Okay, last, my recommendations. I think most people interested in having a YouTube channel overinvest in equipment and underinvest in starting. It's not the arrow, it's the Indian as the same goes. Under 5,000 followers, all you need is a decent gimbal. I like the Gusson Mini S and a cell phone with a good quality camera. You can even edit on your phone these days, it works fine. But maybe throw in a small action camera like the Firefly ASE and a lav mic. Honestly, if you can't get to 2,000 followers with that, it's not your equipment holding you back, it's your content. Every vlogger I've met has more fancy cameras than me, even when they have channels under 2,000 followers. My advice is to spend more time hitting the books and tutorials, Let's time opening the wallet. There are a few channels that for vloggers are, I think the expression is table stakes. If you don't put in the time to learn, you just can't reasonably expect much. Maybe others do it a different way, but I'm studious. And so my advice is to be a student first. Watch every frame a painting. Take a look at the one on Jackie Chan. See if you can spot where that video influenced the style on my channel. And the most difficult thing is when I throw the fan and coming back, more than 120 tick. Those kind of things, oh, Jackie, good. It's not good, you can do it. Except, do you have the patience or not? But really, watch all the videos in the Every Frame a Painting series. If you are like me and coming in without knowing anything about film, it will change how you look at it. The point is not to make RZ looking YouTube videos, but to gain respect for the craft and understand that like anything, there are lessons to be learned that you probably won't figure out on your own. Respect expertise and seek it out. 
A few other channel recommendations are in the description box. So if you want to build a YouTube channel and can't be bothered to learn the trade, well, that's on you. Sure, Naomi has a successful channel. How hard can it be? Well, like everything, I do it by knowing how little I know, seeking out experts, and following best practices. If I can do that, anyone can. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, it really helps. And I'll see you all next time.